live, 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 live. Oh, oh, we yeah. are on the YouTubes. And yeah. uh, it looks like we have a folks or two showing up. It looks like maybe Tommy left for a moment. Well, and he better get back here. Yeah. Uh, he just slid into the server, it says. Should I just give it a couple of minutes before? Oh, I give, it, give it one more minute. Let's not wait too long. Aunt Cron Cronhaven is here. Aunt Tudor's, Tudor's here. Yeah, it looks like Aunt Tudor's here. And, and I could um, swear there was someone else briefly. Janet... I don't know. Uh, I know. I, I know that uh, Tommy was in the house, so to okay, speak. Maybe that's who I saw. And uh, Hubby should be along any oh, time now. Oh, Crone's getting some popcorn. <gasps> Speaking of which, I've got another. I've got another prop. And uh, oh, I might have been in the wrong room. Oopsie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, um. <laughs> oh. 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 Better save some of that for the chickens. I know how they love it. Oh God, do they ever? Do they, uh, do they like the the uh, the the extra butter, or do they like the? Now, I I don't know about you, but uh, I was introduced to a um, a tasty treat on some pop. <laughs> Or not when I was younger, it was something my uncle used to like, and it's good I lord. What was it? it? It's um cinnamon and sugar on popcorn. Oh, okay. I could I could see that. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, um uh, kind of a major trend in the early 80s, at least around Rochester and such, mm -hmm. was um sweetly flavored popcorn. Mm. And you could certainly get cinnamon sugar. I remember, at least when I was a little tyke, when the microwaves were becoming in vogue and everything had a microwave version, including, and I don't know for what reason, brownie mixes and cakes, Ooh. which all turned out like wrung out sponges. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know what? To this day, they're still trying. Ooh. There's those cake in a mug. Um, things you're supposed oh, to yeah. pour, pour the batter into a mug and shove it into your microwave <laughs> but i remember when uh, microwave popcorn was fairly new to the scene they started to add things to it and they had these yes. packets that uh, you put in uh, i think when you're done and it melted all over and it, it some of them were okay there was like caramel corn of course yeah. depending on what part of the country you're in you might say caramel corn yeah what do you say i say caramel caramel I'm a, I'm an oddball because I've lived in the Midwest and I've been told I don't have an accent, but I say aunt because my mom's sister is not an insect. <laughs> well, I do too. I say aunt and I'm not sure there's a real reason I should. I just like it better than aunt. My yeah. Aunt. Those nasal sounds just make you wonder if you're. Hey, you know, from tell us um, like there's supposed to be a Rochester accent. Oh God! Yeah, it's got uh, the A. It's got. They're sitting about the A. Well, I I know the locals call it Rotten Chester. Yeah, I don't know. I lived in Rochester. Not that you live in Rochester, DJ, because pff, that would be silly. Mm. Um, but um, I did used to, and there was supposedly a Rochester accent. Uh, at any rate, I think we've got the gang all here, unless you want to wait another minute for Billy. Yeah, he'll be along. But yeah, it's it's kind of like they say that the uh, us northeasterners will say, uh, you know, creek versus crick or roof versus. Oh wood. yeah, I say crick. Yeah, or I we, think I say crick too. Yeah, totally say crick. We should get the shoe going. We should. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. It's Natanae Minusha. Yeah. Show about film and television trivia. Please mind the aisles and see your usher. <laughs> Good. That, that would be me, Buster. All right. I'm sorry, DJ, I interrupted. You that, go right ahead. That's okay. That's one of our ushers, Buster Brown. It's good to see you. 
Excuse so, me. <laughs> it is May 1st, Toppy. Did you can you believe it? Did you turn the calendar page today? Well, yeah, but you know what? Aunt Tudor, who's in the chat room, posted a happy May Day photo, and you can see people dancing around a maypole. Ooh. All right, can I tell you that in Pickle Hollow, I was in the last class that ever did that. And it would have been like 1972, the year of our movie, I think. And there's some reason, I'm sure there's some reason the school stopped it. Either it was because it was too religious or too pagan or something. I don't know. But after the year I did it, and it's just like that photo right there, um, they never did it again. It was the last time in Pickle Hollow. Was there polka music? <laughs> You know, I don't remember what the music was. I really don't. But, uh, you, you know, you would think it would be polka music. Perhaps. Now, so it's uh, it's May 1st, and we've been trapped in doors for a couple of months, and we've got some, some time to come. I have it on good authority. But around the corner, we've got a very special holiday where we pay tribute to the ladies who have brought us into the world. It's going to be mother's day. And tonight we're going to be talking about a film uh, that stars one of your mama's favorites. I do believe. Well, this was kind of the reason I chose it is my mother loves Barbara Babs Streisand. Oh, and before I start tonight, folks, I swear I know better, but I'm apt to say Streisand. It's because my entire life I've said Streisand. I know it's not correct. It's Stry Streisand. Stry Anyways, it's not the way I say it. And I apologize. I just can't help it. We're going to shorten it and say Babs. <laughs> okay, I'll say Babs. And <laughs> she's my mother's favorites. And I was kind of a little surprised when I mentioned What's Up Doc to my mother. And I really thought it was one of her favorite films. And she said, oh, I don't really like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So anyways, my mother doesn't really like this movie, but I chose it for her and for Mother's Day. So, Toppy, are there any special activities that you've done in years past? Because everybody knows, of course, that right now we're going through a special time here where we've got a be a little bit more aware of those around us and you know um they will cover when you cough that kind of a thing but what are some of the things that you've done in years past to observe mother's day do you go out for dinner do you make a meal well it was never missed in our house um when it was mother's day you didn't have to be a mother to be celebrated you just had to be a woman <laughs> um but um uh, we would all get together, everybody, aunts, cousins, blah, blah, blah. It was like a big deal. And if you were a woman, you got flowers. <laughs> you didn't have to be a mother. <laughs> and um, it's, you know, a, a lot of those people are gone now. And my parents are still here. And it's much more low key. But certainly there will be flowers. There will probably be a breakfast that I will make for them in house what what do you do how how do how did you used to observe it well um i i remember the flowers part you know uh i was mom's shadow for certain social activities because well my dad was raised catholic and it was during a time when services were in latin still you know back before the 60s and mm. so uh when when his family broke up he, he kind of fell out of love with the church. So whenever there was a holiday, that's the only time Ed went with mom to church. But <laughs> I remember on Mother's Day at mom's church, she would have uh, flowers handed out to her and the other ladies. And uh, I remember in, uh, in more recent years before we lost Mama Star Sage, uh, I would usually buy her, not flowers, I would usually buy her a like a potted plant, something oh, yeah. that you could plant in her yard that would last through the rest of the year. So totally. Like I said, I got my mother flowers and it usually would be like a hanging basket that would last the whole summer. Hmm. Oh, I want to ask you 
do you remember anything about this? Um, another May Day thing. You did it on May 1st. My father remembers doing this. I do not, but it must have been a thing in the 50s. On May Day, mothers would take their kids around the neighborhood and the kids would run up to the porch and leave a basket of something or a card. Do, mm -hmm. Anybody in the chat room remember that was a thing on May Day, or was that just here in Pickle Hollow? Huh. Well, I, you know, as I as I peek over the balcony, I see a longtime friend of the show, uh, the Duchess, aka Moren, is there. So maybe she might know because I I do believe that uh, Moren and you might have had the same uh, childhood. So we'll we'll see if I get an answer from her. Could be. Hmm. But yes, we it looks like we've got ant shooters and uh, we've got Cronavens lurking. I, I hear she plays some games now and then, so she may or may not be in the room. Yeah, she's uh, a troublemaker. And it's good to see Marin again. We've missed her and we have Aunt Tudor back once again. And of course, our old pal, Tommy, he's here. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Yes. So um, now Gertie is in the house. I do hear Gertie. Are you there? Yeah. What of it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Hi. <laughs> so are you going to go see your mom on uh, this Mother's Day? <laughs> of course. Let me Wait a minute. Let me make sure she's still alive. No, she's fine. She's fine. She's fine. Weren't you going somewhere special to see her? <laughs> um, what? You told me where I was going, TJ, and I don't remember now. Oh, TJ, where wow. am I going? The cat's out of the bag. Uh, you know, um, our senior showgirl here, Gertie, she's, she's, uh, yeah. you know, she's, she's got some longevity in her family. Now oh, yeah, she yeah. be going to see her mama at the cemetery, but. Oh yeah, that's where, that was it, the cemetery. Yeah, but uh, mama is still with us, isn't she? What, what's she doing at the yeah. cemetery? You're going to have to remind me, DJ, because. I've forgotten. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't well, remember the gag. You got to tell me the gag. Oh, well, behind, you know, peeking behind the curtain here, here's one of those jokes that Martin and Lewis dropped. But, uh, you know, Gertie's mom is the groundskeeper at the cemetery. She's oh. still with us, but she's there because she gets to spend time with her old friend. That's right. DJ, I apologize. I can't <laughs> believe I forgot that. Yeah. You know, sometimes... You gotta, you gotta watch it because if you don't uh, stay tuned, you'll miss these jokes. No, seriously. <laughs> anyway, can we get on with it? Uh, I, I just want to introduce the show and get back down to my concession stand and eat candy. Okay, and when we get back, it looks like uh, Moren's wondering what we were talking about. To go ahead and type it out in the chat room for her, folks. So, Toppy, um, let's get Gertie sent down those stairs. All right, go ahead, Gertie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Howard is a Midwestern music nerd whose studies have brought him and his betrothed to the city by the bay. While attending a conference, he accidentally crosses paths with the charming yet mischievous Judy. Before you know it, she's crashed his party and swapped places with the future missus. Did she do it because she was smitten or just looking for a free lunch? Oh, <laughs> how's Howard going to explain this to Eunice? Will he ever catch a break? Bab Streisand and Ryan O'Neill star in What's Up, Doc? Ha <laughs> ha, hit it, boys! What do you get when you take a dash of the silver screen, a pinch of golden oldies, and a smidgen of screaming? It's time for Matinee Minutia with your host, DJ and Toppy. Very good. Are you with me, DJ? I am. All right. Hey, uh, that Crownhaven uh, in the chat room said she did the Maypole dance at school. Did we call it a Maypole dance? What did we call it? A Maypole? Yeah, it was a Maypole dance. Hmm. 
Hmm. And I, I do believe that that's uh, part of the celebration of the arrival of spring. It was very pagan. I mean, the next after the maple dance, we lit a campfire, took our clothes off, and jumped over it. No, seriously. No, that was not. We didn't do really. We didn't really do really. uh, Toppy be nimble. Toppy be quick. Toppy yeah. fell over the candlestick. Yes. And then I, then I walked into this giant wicker man and somebody set it on fire. Never mind. No, that's just not true. Uh, the the, uh, the misspent youth. All right. So we've got a movie that we're talking about tonight here in light of it being Mother's Day. Because... Uh, you know, Toppy's uh, sweet mama is a big fan of Babs. And uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, play a little bit about the movie here, Toppy? Yeah, to play that crazy theme. And this is a nut theme. Uh, play the crazy trailer. And this is a nutty trailer, I got to tell you. Wait to hear this. This is San Francisco, the city chosen by one of the most brilliant and sensitive new generation of filmmakers, Peter Bogdanovich for his maiden comedy effort, What's Up, Doc? Starring Barbara Streisand and Ryan O'Neill. Where are we? I can't see. Well, there's not much to see, actually. We're inside a Chinese dragon. Any experienced observer of shooting techniques will quickly sense the utterly new and different atmosphere created on the Bogdanovich set. No more the crass showmanship and slapdash of the old Hollywood. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Who are you? I'm Peter Bogdan. What's the picture you're making? This little picture we're making today is, um... What's up, Doc? Oh, what's up, Doc? See what I mean? He goes, boom, and then comes back, and you have to get out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh... Uh, what's the word I say? Isn't it action? Oh, action. I can't find my rock. Let's check the cases. Which ones? All of them. Here, too, none of the catch-as-catch-can do-it-anyway attitudes of former filmmakers. Print. Here, instead, is a skilled artist, sophisticated in his craft, using the camera as Hyphex uses a Stradivarius. <laughs> The relationship between star and director is no longer, as in the old days, one of master and slave. Here, mutual respect between the artist director and the artist stars make possible an exquisitely honed response. You must remember this. C minor seventh. A kiss is still a kiss. In a rare glimpse of two artists at work, we are afforded an insight into how director Peter Bogdanovich, working with stars Barbara Streisand and Ryan O'Neill, can manage to put these two performers together and create that almost indefinable thing, which is most simply described as a motion picture called What's Up, Doc? And when to lovers they still say they still say I love you yeah. on that no matter what the future brings. And there you go, folks. Uh, that was uh, not a typical trailer of its time, and it was uh, Bagdanovich, maybe have, may have had sway over making it. It, 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 it the, 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 you could kind of hear it in the trailer, but the visuals was was a lot of backstage things um, that were filmed while they were actually acting, and uh, just not. It was a very different trailer. DJ, we're talking nineteen seventy two. Uh, that's when What's Up Doc came out, and we like to set the stage and tell us what was going on in the world in uh, 1972. 
Alrighty, so in 1972, the year that uh, What's Up Talk came out in theaters, uh, we have Shirley Chisholm. She was the first Amer African American congresswoman. She announced her candidacy for president then. Also, in another groundbreaking event, the Pioneer 10 spacecraft launched from Cape Kennedy and it became the first man made satellite to leave the solar system. Sally Priesen became the first female U.S. rabbi, first for the, uh, the Jewish community there. The first rainbow gathering was held in Colorado, and this is a, a gathering of folks that are, uh, you know, more um, uh, pretty spirited folks, maybe. You might refer to them as sort of a, a fairyish type of folk. And, uh, Wait a minute! Were they called the fair the fairies? Uh, what were they called? No, they, it was just the Rainbow Gathering. I think that uh, in some periods of time they've been known as the Rainbow Family, but uh, it's uh, naturists and nudists and uh, people who, you know, uh, um, get rid of their possessions. So that's it's just a free spirited community. It's the Rainbow Gathering. It was in oh. Colorado. I don't the first time in 72. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, uh, 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 Tommy in the chat room goes to, well, maybe I shouldn't say, never mind. <laughs> um, it's similar with similar events. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So uh, also in 72, uh, 100,000 people attended the legendary Watt Stacks, W A T T, Stacks, S T I X. Now, I've never heard of that. This was a concert that remembered the 65 Watts riots. They were race riots in Los Angeles. It was a black music concert in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Okay. Also in 72, country singer Loretta Lynn, a lot of women made history that year. She made history becoming the first female to ever win the coveted Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year Award. Wow. And another couple of important ladies in 72, Eugene Cernan. Actually, this isn't a lady. Sorry. Eugene Cernan was the last person to walk on the moon. So 72, that's when we left the moon before I was born. Oh, dear. A peace delegation that included singer activist Joan Baez. You know, the lady who sang about um, uh, the uh, blowing in the wind. He delivered mm -hmm. the Christmas mail to American prisoners of war. Mm. And that was in 1972. Also, we have a few folks that entered the world in 72. We've got some celebrity births, Choppy. Let us know who entered the world. All right. Well, you might know these people. Robin Lively. She was an actress and not quite human in 87 with Alan Thicke. We got Billy Joe Armstrong, a musician. Hey, he's the lead guitarist of Green Day. Keith Ferguson, he's a voice actor. Uh, he played the blue character from Foster's Home. Leslie Mann, it's a man, baby. Actress, girlfriend, daddy, big daddy with Adam Sandler. We got Jennifer, a lot of people were born. This month, folks, we can't list them all, but we do have Jennifer Garden, Garner, Dwayne Johnson, Octavia Spencer, John Cho, Will Wheaton, Rebecca Raman. <laughs> <laughs> Not Raman Noodles, Romaine. Oh, is no, how do you spell how do you pronounce Rebecca's last name? Rebecca Romaine. And she's important because she recently played the original first officer of Star Trek. Oh, Captain why don't I... Pike's number one. Oh, wow. <gasps> I do remember her. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. And she was also Mystique in the original X Men movies done with Patrick Stewart. Good Lord. All right. DJ, this is kind of a switch for us here. Normally, not because we plan to. But normally, our movies that we pick here at Matinee Minutia don't really do a great deal of box office action. But our choice this this time, What's Up Doc, didn't do too bad. But what were what was the whole uh, scene like in the theaters? 
Yeah, so in 72, the other shows that were competing for your attention, because this was a movie, this was a film release at the theater. And, uh, well, for a change, as Toppy was just saying, uh, What's Up, Doc, was not the underdog. Surprise, nope. surprise. It made some money. It sure did. Uh, you know, uh, Babs was was able to buy another coat, I'm sure. Ah. And number one that year, Martin Scorsese's The Godfather. No, no, no. Not no uh, 133 yeah. million. Oh, oh, but, but ooh, it wasn't, I'm wrong. Yeah, it wasn't Martin Scorsese. Um, good Lord. Suddenly. His name has vacated <laughs> my mind. Well, someone in the chat room will tell us. It's who iconic, did. and I should. No, that's fine. Someone in the chat room will it's, tell uh, us. It was did. the Godfather. Yeah. Keep going. Someone you know, will kiss tell my us. ring here for being wrong. <laughs> number two that year is a film that we we kicked off the new year with. This was the Poseidon Adventure, which raked in ninety-three million. Yay. Still wasn't enough to save the ship. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, but uh, the creme de la creme is tonight's film. What's up, Jock? It brought in sixty-six million. Yay. But it was because we go ahead. <laughs> Because we support the underdog here, I'm just going to give some honorable mention to the box office duds in 72. We've got the fourth of five films in this series that uh, I have it on good authority or my, my partner in crime's favorites. It's Well, it was number 18, and uh, it brought in only $9.7 in 72 as Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. And number 19 was The Cowboys, which I believe was a film uh, with Clint Eastwood, who was 7.5 million. And number 20, usually our cheap seats that we find ourselves in, was a movie called Joe Kid, was one of John Wayne's last films. And no it made kidding. Three million. 6.3. I, I I don't remember Joe Kidd. I don't remember the Cowboys, but I'll tell you what. I remembered Conquest of the Planet of the Apes because I was a Planet of the Apes nutcase. <laughs> I couldn't get enough of those movies. All right. You know what? Let's get into the cast of our little film that I dearly enjoyed. Uh, what's up, Doc? Um, well, we got to start with Barbara Streisand. What do we, we sure know? do? This is quite the talented lady. Now, uh, what's up, Jock? Was her fifth number five film in six years? She was a busy lady in the 70s. Oh, she was cranking it out. I mean, I, I can't believe when you think about how busy she was on stage, on TV, in movies. I mean, she was young and she could do it, but man, she made the she made the most of her youth. I'll tell you that. Sure did. And the movie she made before What's Up Doc came out in '70, and it was with George Segal. She she played a lady of the night, and it was called The Owl and the Pussycat. And uh, the film after What's Up Doc was in '72 with Mr. David Selby. It was called Up the Sandbox. Which I think was a real stinker. A total bomb. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Up the Sandbox was a total bomb. Yeah, I think it was one of those crazy housewife movies. Um, it was... I, I don't know. I, I may be... It, it had some sort of political issue. It was very of the day. And somehow it just... I don't know. But uh, Barbara would star in six more films within the next five years. So yeah. within 10 years, she's done about a dozen movies. Amazing. And, and to this day, uh, she has uh, she's taken to being more behind the camera these days. But she has a total of 23 credits as of today. And one of the more recent roles was a, a film that I mentioned in her last show, a, uh, a homage to... Um, 
Oh, uh, I'm forgetting the late the last movie that we talked about. <laughs> uh, 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 what did we do last time? <laughs> well, it oh, the, the, the in-laws. Oh, the yeah, in-laws. So, so, yeah. Right. So one of Babs's more recent films that she did that was sort of an homage to the in-laws from <clears throat> 74 ish, I think was um meet the parents now she wasn't in the first installment she was in the sequel which is called meet the fockers and uh, she played a, a therapist of sorts in that so that was one of her more recent roles but toppy there are some other people in this cast much uh, to our amazement who was her co-star in this i i'm gonna get right into that dg but i was looking in the chat room and uh, just to answer what we were mystified by a few minutes ago, it was Francis Ford Coppola who directed uh, 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 The Godfather. So um, uh, Myron came up with that. Um, so uh, also, Aunt Tudor posted a photo. It's from What's Up Doc. It's got Ryan O'Neill on one side, Barbara Streisand on the other, and in the middle, an actor who I'm not going to be able to tell you the name of, but if I tell you the scene that I know, it was not Bud Court. Uh, the scene that probably everyone remembers him is in, at the very beginning of Young Frankenstein. This actor is a, is a, is a, uh, a student who stands up and asks, Dr. Frankenstein. And Gene Wilder says, uh, that's Frankenstein. Oh, Frankenstein. And he oh, question, yeah. questions him about the research. And right. You know, the, the guy in the picture is actually the uh, the professor. However, the person you're talking about is played by Kenneth Mars. No, no, no. Kenneth Mars was not. Kenneth Mars wasn't young Frankenstein. He was the police officer with the wooden hand. But that actor right there, as I said, was in the beginning of the movie. Oh, I'm sorry. I mistook. Yeah, that's not Kenneth Mars in that movie. Anyways, let's move on. Um, he has a, dis the, a distinguished voice that you, you can't, once you, once you see him in the movie, in What's Up Doc, and you hear his voice, you immediately go, oh, that's that guy that was in Young Frankenstein. So the other cast, Ryan O'Neill was opposite. Barbara Streisand, and they really made a splash together. People loved seeing them on screen together. And this was only Ryan and Neil's third film. Uh, he did Wild Rovers in 71 with William Holden and Tom Skerritt just before that. And just after, um, he did The Thief Who Came to Dinner, but the movie that he excelled in and was so wonderful in, Ryan O'Neill did Paper Moon, which was also directed by the director of this movie, Peter Begdanovich. Paper Moon, oh, lordy, McLord, lord, if you've never seen Paper Moon, you gotta see it. It is special. It is Madeline Kahn is in it too. And oh. Madeline, Madeline Kahn is in our movie tonight. Anyways, uh, I, I, I feel personally that Paper Moon was Ryan O'Neill's pinnacle. And oh, what a great movie. Uh, DJ, but who debuted in What's Up Doc? Oh, well, I've got a minor confession that I'll give you in just a moment here. But uh, the person who made her screen debut in What's Up, Doc, was the, the love interest of Ryan O'Neill's character, or at least who he arrived at the, the ball, so to speak, with. And that was his fiance, And uh, she was played by Madeline Kahn. No. And the first words, in the first scene she appears in, you hear her voice before you actually see her and the minute you hear her voice you go oh my god madeline khan 
<laughs> so she, uh, Madeline Kahn is, of course, an American actress. She's a comedian, voice actress, and singer. She's known for comedic roles in films directed by Bogdanovich and Mel Brooks, including tonight's film, as well as Young Frankenstein and High Anxiety with Mr. Mel Brooks and History of the World Part 1. And that was in eighty one. So she got busy in you know in the seventies, uh, early eighties. Yeah, there, this, this was a busy time for her. And of course, uh, she was in the film that Toppy was just mentioning, Paper Moon, in seventy three. And of course, one of my favorites with Gene Wilder, Blazing Saddles, in seventy four. <laughs> now, Madeline Kahn made her. Broadway debut in Laird Silman's New Faces in 68. So right around when Babs was getting the start on her career. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And she received a Tony Award nomination for the play In the Boom Boom Room. Oh, that's just a, a perfect title for a Madeline Kahn feature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in 74, for the original production of the musical on the 20th, 20th century which is in 78 and she starred as madeline well she she didn't always go by madeline Kahn. she starred as madeline wayne on the short-lived sitcom on madeline so that was uh just yeah. in 83 um it was called oh madeline oh madeline named after madeline Kahn. but this was a surprise because you would have thought this would have been a huge hit and it just wasn't and madeline khan was in it and nobody could figure out why nobody wanted to watch the show but oh. it failed miserably which was a shame because she was you would feel like madeline khan is made for a sitcom it just didn't work i don't know why yeah. this lady captivated our hearts and she was a experienced theater actress now my confession is going to be this there mm -hmm. was a point in time where i had miss madeline khan confused with somebody who occasionally worked for disney the mouse house there's an actress whose name is barbara harris and okay. she was in one of my favorite jodie foster films there's a film that's been remade several times called Freaky Friday that was in the oh. 70s. And Barbara Harris played Jodie Foster's mother's character in that film. And I thought for the longest time that that was Madeline Kahn. But of course, I was mistaken. And when I watched Clue, I knew for sure it wasn't her. But Toppy, there's a moment in this film where Madeline Kahn, she was exposed to some events that almost had her saying her iconic line from clue that I'm talking about the hotel room when the TV was pulled out of the wall. Mm -hmm. What did, what's that famous line Madeline Kahn is known for from clue. Oh God, you're going to have to tell me <laughs> there are flames going down the side of my oh, even yes. Flames. <laughs> yes. Oh, why didn't I get a clip of that? DJ? Oh my God. Well, we could always add it in post. Oh. All right. So uh, we've got some other folks in the cast here and then we'll briefly break. Cause we are almost about halfway through. All people. Right. And uh, DJ, let me just leap in here and say Cronhaven in the chat room has said that Austin Pendleton is the actor that played the character in What's Up, Doc. Um, he's the guy that was giving out the uh, grant uh, at the symposium. So he was the guy with the money that, you know, that we thought might be giving Ryan O'Neill the grant, and his, that's that. That's what uh, Krog came up with, and I, I believe that's right. Austin Pendleton, and he's done work with the Muppets, so he's he's okay in my book. <laughs> well, how do you know that? It's it's on his IMDb. Did you just go to his IMDb? <laughs> you devil, you! Oh. All right, so uh, Madeline Kahn. Okay, there you go. You gotta love her. Uh, Kenneth Mars is kind of the um, well, the real one of the antagonists in this movie, and 
Kenneth Mars is a treat, especially here. He has this flock of hair that he flips, and he turns his nose up, and he has a ridiculous accent. By the way, when I was watching What's Up Doc, I said, what the hell kind of accent is he doing? And you know what it turns out to be? Croatian. Mm -hmm. That's what my research showed. He was playing some guy from Croatia. He was doing a Croatian accent, or at least a reasonable facsimile thereof. But uh, he is uh, specialized in comedic roles, and he loved to do characters that had accents. He just loved doing that. And so a lot of people used him uh, in their movies <laughs> where he had some sort of crazy accent. That would include Mel Brooks, who used him as uh, the deranged Nazi playwright <laughs> and the producers. Um, the police inspector in Young Frankenstein. He was the guy with the wooden hand, Hans Wilhelm Friedrich Kemp. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was also in Woody Allen's Radio Days in 87. And in Woody Allen's Shadows and Fog in 90. And he voiced a lot of characters on cartoons. And he did the Smurfs, the Biscuits, um, a pup named Scooby-Doo, Tailspin, and a Maniac. So he was around. And he did. Now, there's one. I want to ask the chat room this. Uh, there is one role. I don't know if it was a movie. I don't know if it was a television series. But in every scene, Kenneth Mars had this chin strap that <laughs> that I guess he wore because he was trying to hold his chin in. And he does have a pronounced chin. I don't remember what damn movie that was in, but I just remember him as a character wearing this chin strap to keep his chin in. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. So, DJ, I want you to talk about at the very end of this movie, there's a judge that I just love. <laughs> and he's played by Liam Dunn. Just tell us a little bit about him, and then we'll move on. Who's Liam? What is this guy? Oh, righty. So the the character played by Barbara Streisand is Miss Judy Maxwell. And she's, well, she's just very mischievous. And some might say she's a con artist. She's trying to figure out how to... To make her way, and in fact, shortly after she arrives at the hotel, she uh, she provide she asks if her friends have checked into a room number. Well, she wants to make sure the room's vacant because she's going to order some food to pick up in the hallway. But uh, it turns out, by the time that this uh, these shenanigans have run their course, we find out that Judy's a very special someone. She's the judge's daughter when they all get into hot. Oh my God. That's a spoiler. Yes. Hey, what did you just do? You spoiled the end. Oh my God. Oh no. 1972 is going to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to tell that part. <laughs> we rewound just now. All right. All right. So uh, the judge was played by Liam Dunn, and he was born in New Jersey in 1916. <laughs> Yes, he was uh, a few years old in this, and uh, well, this, this was his, this was his big break. This movie, yeah. and uh, he played Judge Maxwell. Now, on the set of What's Up Doc, Mel Brooks was looking for actors to form a stock, and he recruited Dunn and Madeline Kahn. Now, Dunn is forever remembered for the character of Reverend Johnson in Blazing Saddles with Gene Wilder, mm -hmm. and. Other works include Young Frankenstein <laughs> and Silent Movie in 76. There so you go. Here we are, so a little bad. more than halfway through the show, and we're uh, traipsing on out to the uh, concession stand where our sweet Gertie is there with the treats. Yeah, stuff your face as full of candy. And uh, we have a little piece of uh, enjoyment for your ears. So, Toppy, what are we going to be listening to? Even what did I? 
DJ, sure. what did I put? Just play it. Just we, play we, the we, we have a little thing here from the movie, and it's going to be fun. Have a listen. <laughs> but in this case, and I think the Supreme Court will back me up on this. I am seriously considering setting up a torture chamber. Now, I want this whole ridiculous story told by one person. Does anybody here think they can handle it? All right. And while he's telling it, the rest of you keep whips, red hot irons in the back of your minds. Well, sir, my name is Howard Bannister, and I'm from Ames, Iowa. No excuse. No, sir, but it all started when I bumped my head in a taxi cab on the way in from the airport. Are you pleading insanity or amnesia? Neither, sir, but when I went to the drugstore to get something for a headache, the druggist tried to charge me for a radio because she said her husband would pay for it, but I didn't, of course. Of course. Anyway, she ripped my jacket, and when Eunice came along... Who's, who, who's Eunice? Well, Eunice is my fiancé. You have a wife and a fiancé? No, sir, but uh, she kept calling me Steve. Your own fiancé calls you Steve? No, sir, my wife, or rather the one who isn't my wife. Well, what does the one who isn't your fiancé call you? Howard? No, sir. The one who isn't my fiancé doesn't call me Howard, and the one who isn't my wife doesn't call me Howard. Because the one who isn't my fiancé is also the one who isn't my wife. The other one who isn't my wife, the one who is my fiancé, she doesn't call me Steve. She calls me Howard. Do you see? Steve? Let's just skip over this part. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that night at the banquet, she was there again. Who was there? Who was there? Your wife or your fiancé? Neither. There's a third? No, sir. The one who isn't either. Everyone was calling her Burnsy. Why? Well, that's short for Burns. That's Eunice's last name. Oh, so Eunice was there. No, sir. Burnsy was there. Or rather, the one who isn't Burnsy. I think I want to skip over this part, too. <laughs> well, that night I went back to my room and she was there taking a bath. Who was there? No, no. Don't tell me. Just go on. Well, when Eunice walked in and the drapes caught fire and everything burned, they asked me to leave the hotel. I really don't blame them. Good boy. Is there more? Oh, sure. There's more. Well, the next day, today, uh, Mr. Larrabee asked me to come to his house with my rocks and to bring Eunice, or rather Burnsy, the one he thinks is Eunice. Is that clear? No, but it's consistent. Shall I go back over it? Oh, no, please, I beg you. No, no, no. Just, just go on. Well, it gets kind of complicated now. First, there was this trouble between me and Hugh. You and me? No, not you. Hugh. I am you. You and me? No, I am you. Stop saying that. Make him stop saying that. Don't touch me. I'm a doctor. Have what? Music. Can you fix a high fi No, sir. Then shut up. Well, anyway, he came in and tried to get my case, and then he came in and tried to get his case, and then they came in and tried to get all the cases, and then the shooting started. They forced me to come with them. I was out in the car the whole time. You little freak. Oh, you brought the stuff Silence! Silence! Order! Now, this is my last warning. I intend to get to the bottom of this web of deceit and confusion if it takes me the rest of my life, which may end at a moment. Good Lord, that is why I love his performance. It is hysterical. <laughs> uh, that's just the audio, but if, if, when you when you see him through the whole scene, he is like pouring pills down his mouth and serping medicine from a bottle. <laughs> It's a riot. All right. Let's get to Peter Bogdanovich. He did this movie. He is one of those wonderkins. This guy did so many things so early on in his career that were so freaking fabulous. That kind of like Orson Welles, who he admired greatly. He kind of shot his wad early, to be honest with you. He did a lot of great things in the early 70s. And yes, he he kept going, he kept creating, but none of them matched his masterpieces, which many would say is the last picture show um, that he did <laughs> was his first movie. And like Orson Welles... Um, Rosebud movie. 
Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane, thank you. Much like Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, which was his masterpiece, uh, you, 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 you can't not agree that his very first movie was his masterpiece. And it's kind of neat that uh, bringing up, uh, not uh, that, that What's Up Doc was his next movie because you can't, there are no two different movies than The Last Picture Show and and What's Up Doc. I mean, goodness. But you can, but Bagdanovich loved Hollywood. He loved the history of Hollywood. He loved the people that did things in Hollywood. He loved the directors. He wanted to emulate them. And certainly, when you look at what's up, Doc, what is it other than a 1930s screwball comedy made over again? And he doesn't try to hide that fact. There is a scene in What's Up, Doc, that is virtually ripped right out of Bringing Up Baby, where Barbara Streisand tears Ryan O'Neill's shirt. Well, that's exactly what Catherine Hepburn did to Cary Grant all those years ago. He didn't hide it. It was a, to him, this was a, um, what do you call when you want to ballyhoo something that you love? Um, homage. Thank you, TJ. Uh, an homage, exactly. At any rate, uh, uh, some of his greatest movies, as I said, were done right off Paper Moon with Brian O'Neill, Madeline Kahn. So incredible. As I say, I think that's his, I, that's to me is his masterpiece. And also later on in 85, Mask. Remember that movie with Cher and Eric Stoltz? Sure do. Yeah. So, and he, he, he went on to do many things but but really just it didn't they never measured up to his early work but he is great that's all i can say he wrote many books about the people he loved in hollywood and um he is a student of film that that's the, the last thing now let's get out to the writers there are three main writers for this movie so tell us about them Alrighty, so the team of folks who brought you What's Up Doc included Mr. Buck Henry, and he worked on a very famous film. It got Anne Bancroft her start on the silver screen. It was The Graduate, and he was also co-creator of Get Smart. You know that show about the secret agent who had the shoe phone? Yes. You know, I had a hard time figuring out who Buck Henry was. He acted a lot, too. And he had his hands in a lot of things. He did a lot of writing. But Buck Henry is one of those names you hear and like you just go, who? What? What did he do? I don't know. But he was in a lot of TV stuff. And when I found out he was one of the creators of Get Smart, I just couldn't get over it. And uh, another member of the team was Mr. David Newman. Now, he helped make a film that started off... Um... Oh, I'm uh, Warren Beatty. He was a, the man responsible for writing Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. And Faye Dunaway, yep. Yeah, and then in the 80s, he did uh, the first Superman film. As well as the second and third. And we love him for the first and second, but we're sad for him for the third. <laughs> <laughs> and another 80s favorite of mine that Mr. David Newman was responsible for. It's a film starring one of my favorites, Dudley Moore. It was Santa Claus, the movie, which we talked about on one of my old shows. And it had John Lithgow in it. And uh, the last but not least member of the team that me brought you What's Up, Doc, was Mr. Robert Benton. And he did a film that starred Mr. Dud uh, Dustin Hoffman. He wrote this film. It was Kramer versus Kramer about a very public divorce. And uh, one of the last films he did in the 80s was uh, a breakout role for Sally Fields. He yeah. did the story to Places in the Heart, which I have to watch again. Oh, God. Um... 
I was so impressed with that movie when it came out. I want to say that um, possibly Danny Glover yes. was at the beginning of his career in that. Uh, early on, I can't remember if um, that came before his his big series of oh, the Lethal Weapon movies. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure which came first. Um, all right, DJ, uh, we're getting towards the end here. What what are some of the first of all? When did you see first see this movie? I have heard about it over the years. This is the first time, and I'm very happy, as I am anytime I get to discover, you know, uh, one of these pop culture guilty pleasures, because this was quite a delight. It's it's mm -hmm. um, it actually passes by rather quickly. Yes. It, but uh, nowadays, I think they probably would call it a romantic comedy. Yeah. It's a date movie. Yeah, and so you just saw it for the first time recently? I did. Okay. I saw it, the first time I saw it was on TV in the 70s, and, you know, it was a long, long, long time ago. And I saw it with my grandmother. And we just sat there, and we just laughed and laughed and laughed our way through this movie. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I didn't know what to expect when I revisited it the other night. When I saw it for the first time, and I have to say, it wasn't it wasn't quite as funny as I remember, but still funny and lovable. So, give me some scene in there that grabbed you, DJ. Oh goodness! It it, uh, it was just a joy to watch Barbara having fun on this film because her character was certainly not the you know the serious straight laced character that her her character falls in love with Howard. Howard. But, yes. And uh, I, I want to say that he was the template for many movies to come. He was, he was basically the cookie cutter for um, the, the, uh, the husband to be in um, Rocky horror. That's for sure. Oh, wait, this was before Rocky horror, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, a moment that I think you shouldn't miss watching What's up, Doc? If it's your first time, there's a moment when Judy has gotten to the hotel, the Hotel Bristol. And as I was saying earlier, she asks if her friends are in a certain room number. Because, of course, she's going to have food delivered there. She calls on the house phone, which is which is something they used to have back in the day before we all had cell phones. She had the, the phone in the lobby. You could call others from. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, she orders a very specific thing. Now, do you remember what her room service order was, Toppy? I don't know, but it was a lot of food. I <laughs> very I, rich food. It was a it was a double thick roast beef sandwich right. with one side with mayo and one side with mustard and a hot fudge sundae. <laughs> now that is something I did not remember. But in the beginning of this movie, we find Barbara Streisand' motivation is that she is extremely hungry. <laughs> she have any money, sure apparently and that's why she hasn't eaten because she's she's just broke yeah and she's scheming for ways to eat just find some goddamn thing to eat she's nibbling carrots off of a serving tray that's yeah. one of the iconic moments in the movie but not only does she place her room service order but when she finds her way to the room Somebody else has already stolen the 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 vacant room and is mm -hmm. has claimed her food. So she she's out the food, the poor hungry lady. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. And she she curses the guy under her breath because she's just walking down the hallway and she's about to pick up the tray, and the guy comes out the door and takes it from her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, you know what would be good right here is play that first scene where Barb uh, Babs is nibbling on uh, some celery or carrot and she says what's up doc and it's when she meets Howard for the first time it's a cute scene play that one what's up doc I beg your pardon we've got to stop meeting like this I think you're making a mistake you see I just came in here for something for a headache you're gonna need an awful big glass of water to get that down what <laughs> oh, no, no. you see I'm a musicologist I was just testing this specimen for inherent tonal quality. Uh -huh. I have this theory about early man's musical relationship to igneous rock formations. Uh-huh. 
Oh, but I guess you're not really interested in igneous rock formations. Not as much as I am in the metamorphic or sedimentary rock categories. I mean, I can take your igneous rocks or leave them. I relate primarily to micas, quartz, feldspar. You can keep your pyroxenes, magnetites, and coarse grain plutonic as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I forgot why I came in here. <laughs> that, was their, that was their first meeting. Oops. What's something I said? Shall I, I beg your pardon. Listen, what do you think I am? A piece of ripe fruit? Yeah, you can just try guess so, Toppy, what would you consider to be a moment you shouldn't miss if this is your first time watching? Oh, good Lord. There's several for me. <laughs> okay. So, this movie like this is a screwball comedy. And it also has a lot of slapstick in it. And I am a sucker for slapstick. I don't care. I fall on the floor laughing at the mm -hmm. Three Stooges, okay? I don't apologize for it. Uh, so in one, I, I swear to God, it's my favorite moment in the movie. There's this one part where some enforcer, some mob guy, is trying to delay this rich woman who has jewels in this bag. And her name is Mrs. Van Hoskins, and she's played by character actress Mabel Aber Albertson. Oh, yes. And she's trying to prevent her from reaching her room. Because someone orders him to do it. And all the way through her journey trying to get through a room, he just keeps trying to trip her. And she falls on the floor over and over again. And she's <laughs> completely like, uh, uh, doesn't understand what's happening or why this man is tripping her. But it happens over and over again. And I just could not stop laughing when I saw this. So total slapstick, ridiculous kind of humor that this movie was not afraid of tapping into. Um, I also, of course, love the car chase through San Francisco Hills. And believe it or not, folks, there is a, a pie-throwing scene in this movie. <laughs> yes, I tell you... Um, but my favorite of all favorites is is the ending scene with the judge played by Liam Dunn. But so so much to love. Because mm -hmm. uh, yes, Judy is uh, hiding herself under a, a blanket. I think when everybody else was uh, pleading their case in front of the judge. <laughs> You love to keep spoiling that. No, no, no. You don't know who he is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we got to wrap this up, DJ. Oh. Uh, let's, well, let's say if people love this movie, what would you recommend them to also see? Okay, so... Let me get to my recommendations here. Because Barbara Streisand was in this film, I'm going to tell you another film that I've enjoyed. It's my favorite Barbara film. And this was done a few years before What's Up, Doc? In 69, Barbara did a film that she had been in the play version of. And uh, this was... Uh, um, what's her name? Uh... Oh, Carol Channing's theater big role, but uh, Babs did it on the uh, silver screen yeah. in 69, Hello Dolly with Walter Matthau. I, and I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Should we? Never mind. I won't even get into it. Continue. <laughs> now, because there's a lot of double talk in What's Up Doc, especially when she's having to pretend to be Eunice <laughs> the uh, you know Howard's uh, fiance. I'm going to recommend a film that reminds me of Judy's character, a con artist of sorts. And this was a film done in '92, starring Steve Martin and one of my '80s favorites, Goldie Hawn. This is a film called House Sitter, and the story is a con artist moves into an architect's vacant dream home and ends up pretending to be his new wife. Hmm. It seems I haven't seen that movie, but I can see those two actors being good with each other. What did you enjoy? You, you did enjoy that, obviously. Oh, tremendously, because uh, before the film is over, they're making up memories they didn't have. 
and mm-hmm. that's just part of the comedy because they're they're doing it in for the benefit of strangers. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So um, my recommendations are remember Hello, not Hello Dolly, <laughs> What's Up Doc was an unabashed redoing of basically bringing up baby from 1938 with Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn. Please go see that movie. Oh, my God. It's directed by Howard Hawks and... <laughs> Uh, it, it it's more screwbally than what's up doc in that you know how actors of that day delivered their dialogue it was much faster well barbara was almost doing that but anyways bringing up baby my god that's what i recommend and if you want to see ryan o'neill in another movie with barbara streisand <laughs> then please, by all means, be my guest and see the main event, which was made only seven years after What's Up, Doc? And they certainly thought they were going to recapture the chemistry that Ryan O'Neill and Barbara Streisand had in What's Up, Doc? And maybe they did, maybe they did not. There's only one problem. They entered the disco era, and Barbara Streisand sings disco! Which never should have happened. But it, <laughs> go ahead and see <laughs> Ryan O'Neill and Barbara Streisand in another comedy, and uh, th- those are my um, those are my <laughs> recommendations. If you like this movie, you'll like the main event, and please see Bringing Up Baby. I guarantee you, Cary Grant had an undershirt on when his clothes got tore. <laughs> <gasps> oh, oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> so Tuppy, go ahead and grab us that bag of coins the magician left behind. All right, uh, give me that bag of coins. Yeah, baby. all right, put that in the slot there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here we are, and this is what's coming up next on Friday, May 15th. Here on Univaz at 9 p.m. Eastern, from the director of Revenge of the Nerds, a late 80s comedy starring sitcom Goofy Girl, Shelley Long, and everybody's favorite husband, Craig T. Nelson. A soon-to-be-divorced Beverly Hills socialite is determined to prove to her husband and herself that she can finish what she starts out to do by becoming a den mother to a troop of Beverly Hills Girl Scouts. Next time on Matinee Minutia, Troop Beverly Hills, with special guest, Demanda Martini. Oh, we're going to have a return of Demanda. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, Rady Toppy, let us know who was in the chat room tonight, please. We are very happy that we were joined by our pal Tommy, our friend Marn Gertz, our friend Cronehaven, who we have met in person many times, haven't we, DJ? We have. And also, look at that. That's your husband, Billy. Billy Starsage, and also our favorite Aunt Tudor, who comes by every single time. And we thank you all. And also Lady Janet, friend of the show. Has, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I miss, I miss <laughs> Janet. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, just uh, hearkening back to the film you were talking about earlier, that was the name of the cafe we went to with Aunt Tudor was Paper Moon. Oh, my God. That's right. Good <laughs> catch. Yes, and uh, alrighty. So, if you will, please, sir, go ahead and say good night, Gracie. All right, DJ, good night, Gracie. Thank you for listening to Matinee Minutia. Our show streams live on the first and third Friday of the month. Go to univazpods.net, click the tower for audio, enter Discord for chat. You can find our show anywhere you listen to podcasts. Visit our webpage at matineeminutia.com. Tweet us on Twitter at Matinee Minutia. Find our group on Facebook. Have an idea for a show? Or let us know how we're doing. Email us at matineeminutia at gmail.com.
I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univazpods.net. I am ending the recording and I will go ahead and turn off the stream. Ending broadcast.